Hey, what's cracking everybody? Ralph here. Great to be with you. And tonight we are in Sydney. I know, right? Check out that behind me. Not every day you get to have an epic view like that. And I thought what I'd do is I'd photograph Circular Key at night and show you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and where I'm going so that one, you can enjoy the incredible scenery around here. And two, if you ever happen to come here, I'm going to do all the hard work for you. How does that sound? All right, let's get into it. <laughs> just not working. Gosh. Oh, so good. Shooting Sydney is all about compositions. Yes, it's about making it look interesting and fascinating and maneuvering yourself so that you capture the essence and the heart of this beautiful city creatively. And so there's a few key points and around circular key, forgive the pun, um, and those uh, key points give you great vantage point to the opera house, which is over there, or the bridge that is here, or the city that is over there. It's called a circular key because it's a circle with a key in the middle. <laughs> Who'd have thought, hey? And I happen to choose the weekend that Mardi Gras was supposed to be on to come to the city. So there's a lot happening in the city and no, I didn't come to be in Mardi Gras. Um, the folks that usually join in with Mardi Gras can't because of COVID, so they've canceled the festival. So there's a lot of buzz and excitement and um, life around the city tonight, which adds to the photographic compositions and excitement that we can get. So stick with me, we're gonna shuffle around I'm going to take a while, it's probably going to take me four hours, but probably going to take you, I don't know, 20 minutes, stick around, who knows, and also, it's about 10 p.m. at night, actually it's about 10.30 at night, just to give you a bit of a context about what's happening. First shot we're going to take tonight is of the Opera House, and you will notice that there's these fences all around with these kind of beautiful, um, I don't know, metal things, what are they called, put it in the comments below, I don't know what they're called, however, they've all got this, except they my friends who are fishing, except this one, it's a hole. And if you get your angle just right, look at this, you can shoot through the hole at the Opera House. Pretty sick, right? And then, if you turn around, you can do exactly the same with the bridge in the background. I know, right? So you have to line up your tripod. I use the 24 mil. I get it really close and you balance your tripod on the side of the wall so that your camera's not falling over, but so you've got a good, um, a, a good composition. And then I use the light that's on this camera. You can use the light on your phone just to light up some of the metal in the foreground so it really pops. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the camera through the fence on the tripod because you have to shoot tripod because it's long exposure the reason it's long exposure is to pick up the light trails the light of the city and also blur out some of the choppiness of the water that's what these images do so you must have a tripod to do that so i am um, balance the tripod through here and i shoot the same settings which i'll put on the screen now uh, at the city and i put the horizon of the city where the city meets the water a third up so in the top third because over the city there's nothing happening there's no lights or anything happening over the city there's no stars or anything pretty however the water reflection is something so i fill the frame with the water reflections in the city at the top so your eyes drawn to the top but it's not going like oh there's this big vacant space there what do you think of that shot now i'm going to come up here and I am going to shoot the same settings, but I'm going to start here, I'm going to take one shot, I'm going to move it a third of the frame, I'm going to take another shot, a third of the frame, another shot, a third of the frame, go all the way around until I get a panorama of the entire circular key all the way through to the opera house. I know, right? And then I'm going to stitch them together. Now to do this effectively, you have to have every shot level. So make sure that every time you reposition the camera, you move it a third, you're actually then leveling it out. That's the shot. I go and then I move it a third and I go and then I move it a third and I go click. And you see the horizons getting more and more wonky. Whoop. So what you need to do is readjust each shot to make sure that your horizon's in the same part of the screen as it's always been. I've got a video about this, I'll put this at the end of the video. And also that your horizon and your actual shot is level. And that's the beautiful city we're shooting. 
that's the ferry terminal behind me and in front of the ferry terminal between me and the city is that beautiful sailing ship and so what I want to do is capture that right in the middle of the city in the background now here's the challenge when you shoot that on an aperture of say 16 or 20 uh, this the boat just fades into the background you can't really see it and so if you go lower if you widen up your aperture and take that down to two you blow out the city so what I've had to do is both of those things I've taken a shot where the city is composed uh, with the right sort of light and has the right exposure and then I've taken my aperture all the way through to 2.8 and I've taken a shot with the boat which blows the boat out of the water like literally come on so you have this really um, beautiful boat and then I've taken another one, which is, this is just bracketing, and taken another shot of halfway between 2 and 18. And that's what 4.5 looks like. As you can see, it's really quite bright. Here's the finished shot. See what you think? Remember a few minutes ago, I was talking about how composition is everything. Well, I've just discovered that there's this uh, mirror wall here and the opera house behind me. And so I've basically um, taken my 20 mil and I might actually put a, a, a longer length on. So I might shoot with a 24 to 70 and might tuck it into a 70 to really bring that opera house into focus. But here's the beauty of it. You've got the opera house right at the end and then you've got a mirror on here. So it just looks fabulous. Again, same settings, but like I said, it's about composition. So it's about keep your eyes open and walking slow and thinking creatively about what you might be able to do. And um, my hope is to come back here in a couple of days on sunrise because the sun rises there and do the same shot. There's also a couple of other cool shots, but we'll see if we get a video out of that too. So that's the reflection. You have to have your camera like propped up here and hanging. So I have to hold the thing. I have to do it handheld. Handheld. That's nuts. I also had to um, drop my aperture down to eight so that at an aperture of eight it didn't blow out the sails on the Opera House because they still had to look good. Now because of all of that it was slightly off horizontal so I'm going to have to fix that in post which means when you fix it in post you lose a little bit on the sides. You have to crop in a little bit but I've got heaps of space on the sides and up above and down below to, uh, to lose. And that brings me to this glorious spot. That's right. So I'm going to again use 30 second exposure. I'm going to use an aperture of eight. I'm going to keep my ISO at 100. And I'm going to wait for a ferry to come past and snap it as it comes gloriously in front of the Opera House. You have these streaks down the bottom and the Opera House sitting at the top with the incredible reflection. This is kind of entertaining because uh, you know, I wanted that, that ferry to come past, so this ferry has kind of like come to here and then it did a reverse and it's just sitting there. It just stuffs it all up completely because <laughs> um, it now draws the light of the shot into it rather than allowing the house to be what it is when really we want some lines coming across here. And it's just stopped. It's not very considerate. What is it, a party ferry? The disobedient fairy that's for sure if it was a still night you'd actually be able to see a formation of the way the sails of the opera house in the water but that's not going to happen tonight we're moving around and behind you is the opera house and behind me is a flower shop a rose flower shop and on that rose flower shop there is a uh, pane of glass and some black marble that reflects the opera house and so what i'm doing is i've teed up the shot just like this and then Pull the trigger and it is recording as a tram goes past now the reason I want to show you this is when you shoot into a reflection you can't use autofocus because your autofocus will pick up on the surface of the glass rather than the reflection in the glass it's also almost like the reflection in the glass is behind the surface of the glass so you need to put it on manual focus and, and focus in and again make sure that the reflection is as clear as you possibly can and in post what helps with that is if you increase the contrast so when you're mucking about with these images later on, in post, you increase the contrast. This is the shot. That's, that's pretty arty and pretty mint, right? So we were just over here, and then I walked all the way around to there and out to here. And what I love about this place is you can go anywhere legally. They haven't closed down anything. So generous of you, Sydney Council. 
All right, anyway, let's move on. I'm gonna take a shot of the bridge from here, so that should look pretty epic. And then I'm gonna take a shot of the opera house, and then I'm gonna use these leading lines. So a leading line, as we've talked about before, leads the eye from where it starts all the way to where you want it to go. And there's leading lines everywhere, but in this case, it leads us straight into the city. And I'm gonna take that shot of the city. This is where the cruise ships come in to dock. So they come underneath the bridge, circle around here, and into dock just here, and crazy happy passengers before COVID go and jump on it. And now, well, really, that's about as many people that are as excited to get on a cruise ship these days. Thanks to the, no, we won't go there. All right, um, and then what I'm gonna do is when a um, ferry comes past, I'm gonna do a bit of panning with the opera house in the background. So panning is when you put your uh, shutter speed at about a 20th of a second and you focus in, I'll put a video at the end where my Harry Harrison Tong photography talks about how you pan, which is just all you need to know. But basically you, you focus on and open the exposure as you track what you're shooting and everything in the background looks blurry. So it's a really cool effect rather than everything in the foreground being blurry, everything in the background's blurry. And that which was your subject looks really good. So we just gotta wait for a ferry to come along now. Uh, but they're more constant than you might think, and it's about midnight, so Sydney is cooking. Now when you do night photography like this, there's always the chance that some people are going to stand in front of your shot. And so how do you get rid of them? Well, you've got a couple of options. Some of those options are in post. So post editing, you can just delete them out and edit them out by using content aware or a healing brush or a clone tool or there's a few different options the other one is if they're moving take the shot on long exposure because if they're moving over the course of 30 seconds they actually vanish ha, I know right crazy the other thing that I really want to stress with this sort of photography is when you're shooting lights there's really white lights and really black blacks and you don't want to lose the detail in the lights you can afford to lose some of the detail in the darks but not in the lights and so your best bet because you don't want to alter your shutter speed from a long shutter speed is actually to increase your aperture number which decreases the amount of light that's let in which brings out the detail so when I'm shooting the opposite house like just before I made sure I bumped up my aperture to about 20 so that I can see the detail in the sails on the opera house as opposed to it just being a white uh, plane because I didn't want a white plane I wanted the detail in the sails as you can see I've been drawn into the festive spirit of the night and at the moment I'm just trying to shoot the subway train that comes in just here and as it does such it gives a blurry streak there's a window and i'm using the leading lines of the lights curved round to um, to draw you in to where the train is going to be and if i could get a ferry to leave at the same time that would be epic but you've already seen what a disaster the last ferry panning shot was it's because they moved too slow it's just so hard to predict their speed because it's like this anyway um we're just waiting on the train and then I'm going to move in, sweep round, and then we're nearly at the Opera House. So now what I'm doing is I'm going along the, the front of where the ferries come in and so I'm going to use them as subjects in the foreground to shoot the bridge and the Opera House and the harbour in the background you've got less light because the light is all in the city rather than out here so it should actually come up okay We're nearly there, we've got to the Opera House and I wanna to talk to you about that in just a few minutes because I've got a very specific and cool thing I wanna show you when we get there. But in the meantime, if you've been enjoying this video and if you like some other videos, if you haven't already, please subscribe, become part of our creative crew and give us a thumbs up. I'd love to hear your input on tonight's video and what you think of it. Now, the beauty of the Opera House is it's white. 
And the beauty of shooting at night is it's black. So you've got white and you've got black and you've got black and you've got white. And what I want to do is shoot the Opera House now in black and white. I'm going to walk up to it. I'm going to use a much quicker shutter speed. I'm going to increase my ISO and I'm going to fire off some shots to capture the architecture and the brilliance and the beauty of the Opera House. Now it doesn't always work with all situations but because it's just so stark in its whiteness against the black sky it should it should work well. So um, here, well here's, here's how it went. So it's now 1.30 in the morning, Harbour Bridge is behind me, which means we've done the loop from way over there all the way around to here. It must be maybe 140 kilometres walking I've done tonight. Um, yeah, but we made it, so I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you've um, had a blast watching these photos. I hope if you ever come to Sydney, you get a chance to photograph it because this place is amazing. I came here a couple of years ago and photographed it and well, let's just say my photographs tonight are a billion times better than what they were, uh, which is all down to practice and learning and getting better. So I just encourage you to get out there, shoot, enjoy yourself, follow this page, subscribe. Can you believe that? I'm like in the middle of my sign off and the battery dies on my camera and it's done. I'm miles away from where I should be. So I just wanted to say, please subscribe. Love you guys. See you in the next video. <laughs>